The Weather Forecast with Coloca and its multi-purpose banquet hall, Il Palazzo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a pleasure to have you again on the weather forecast to be you're enjoying the evening. Between tonight and tomorrow morning, the weather will be calm in most parts of the country with temperatures as low as 13 degrees. We're talking about the west and the far north regions with a north as low as 14 degrees. We'll have in the center as low as 20 degrees, 21 degrees in the south in the littoral and southwest regions would have the least temperature at 17 degrees. We take you to the East region where tonight there is no chance of precipitation in the entire region and same thing by morning with Habongbang and Betwa having the least temperature at 18 degrees. On to the Adamawa region tonight there would be no chance of rainfall and same thing by morning with Tignye having the least temperature at 15 degrees. And lastly, on to the northwest this evening there would be no chance of rainfall in the entire region and same thing by morning with Fundong having the least temperature at 12 degrees. I encourage you to visit the northwest and experience the Fawns Dance. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Up tonight, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute inaugurates Bengo Hotel, the South region's first ever state-owned modern lodging facility constructed in a Bulova. Public Works Minister Emmanuel Ganun Jumisi describes as satisfactory the pace of construction works on the Yaoundé Douala Motorway and asks engineers to keep the speed. And government begins distributing over 1.7 billion civil francs as elections campaign money, but candidates say the funds are not sufficient. So how much does it cost to organize campaigns? The details now. Thanks for watching the 730 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. Ebolova, chief town of the south region, has joined the rank of regional capitals with a state-owned hotel. The Bengal International Hotel was inaugurated in the town today by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, representing the head of state. The ceremony brought together a host of government ministers, administrative and civil society personalities, and a cross-section of the population including officials of the South region and business persons, potential users of the facility. The Bengo Hotel in the South region is said to be a booster to tourism, according to local officials. It was launched by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute. As I was saying, the Bengo Hotel is said to be a boost to tourism in the South region. According to local officials, the hotel is likely to attract businessmen and tourists and improve the economic activities in the locality. Clarence Aze reports from Ebolova. Here comes the giant, magnificent hotel, Christent Hotel Bengo, the name of a nearby stream to the hotel which used to be a source of water for people many years ago. It is situated at the north entrance into the town of Obolova from the nation's capital, Yawundi. The architectural jewel is almost complete with most of the installations in place. The, the work is uh, about uh, 87%. All equipment, uh, I think, are quite there. I think all things have been respected. It needed much time, about 11 years, to overcome financial and environmental challenges to obtain this charming output. Hotel Bengo has 93 rooms, two presidential suites, conference halls, a gymnasium, restaurants, bars, a nightclub, leisure park, and a swimming pool to offer visitors maximum comfort. We could count on Hotel Bengo for the success of most upcoming events in the country. We are ready to welcome and make good use of Hotel Bengo. The new state-of-the-art hotel has embellished the town of Bolova a fantastic souvenir of the 2011 Agropastora show to inhabitants of the South. Many are already foreseeing huge socioeconomic benefits once Hotel Bengo is inaugurated. That was the guided tour of that facility that was inaugurated today by the Prime Minister, 
head of government, Chief Dr. John, John Gute, and we stay in the South region to talk about the economic impact of that facility. According to local officials, the hotel is likely to attract businessmen and improve tourism and, of course, the economic lives of the people of the South region. Details in this report. The socioeconomic impact of the newly inaugurated Ebolova Bengo Hotel cannot be overemphasized. Many in the tourism sector in the South region see the hotel as a catalyst for tourism development. We'll be able to host big seminars since the hotel has the capacity. People could also come from Gabon and Equatorial Guinea to lodge there. The hotel will not only attract tourists, but a veritable arena to chat business deals for most heavyweight traders and multinational companies. Local poultry farmers and butchers are already thinking ways of partnering with the structure. Most of our customers who buy cows come from Gabon. Hardly do they have good hotels to lodge. We are happy for this hotel. Some of us butchers will even supply meat there. We sincerely thank President Paul Bia for offering such a hotel to Ebolova. Bengo Hotel is not only fascinating and inviting to tourists and businessmen, but most youths in the South Regional Chief Town Ebolova now know the next door to knock at for employment opportunities. I heard of the inauguration of Bengo Hotel. I pray God to pick up a job there. The giant structure and its splendor, which many people here refer to as one of the juicy fruits of the Moabi, a tree planted by President Paul Bia during the 2011 Ebolova Agro Pastoral Show, will for sure satisfy the desires of many. On the sidelines of his visit to the South region, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute also inspected some major government projects under construction in Ebolova. He visited the construction site of the 100 apartment low cost housing scheme launched under the three year emergency plan and made an appraisal of the state of the evolution of the Gynaco Obstetric Hospital as well as the refrigerated warehouse. The presence of the PM at the various sites was to pump fresh impetus and galvanize construction to accelerate work, work on the project, which is intended to improve the living conditions of the populations. The speed of work on the Yaoundé Douala motorway has been described as satisfactory. The Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Ngandun Jumisi, made the assessment today during an evaluation visit. He instructed the Chinese road construction company to maintain the pace and deliver by the December 31, 2020 deadline. Details with Joyce Kimbe Fawajo. Engineers reducing massive rocks to dust at kilometre 40 on the Yaoundé Douala motorway. Work is intensifying to meet up with kilometer 60 that ends the first phase of the country's revolutionary project on time. We have already finished 82% of the total of the amount. We can see uh, uh, clearly that we have a lot of rocks uh, here. The supervisory authority, the Minister of Public Works, proceeded with a first-hand appraisal seeing mobilization of machines and humans at the work site before catching up with the meeting, grouping all actors involved in the construction project. Technical, administrative and financial constraints were addressed to keep up with the steam of work to finish. It was to construct just uh, a road, just a road, but the head of state decided that it should be a, a, a highway. To export the highway, you have to set up some equipments. So you should, we have to look for money in order to set up for those equipment. When you you take into consideration this section of the road from Yaoundé to the entrance of the highway, when you take into consideration the exploitation equipments, when you take into consideration that we are moving from a road to a highway, you understand that we need some additional financing. At conclusion, it was agreed that in the days ahead, illegal occupants of site works will be ejected to ensure that the beauty and functioning of the Yaoundé motorway is hitch free. Senior officials of central and regional services of the Ministry of Finance are meeting in Yaoundé to strategize on how to render quality service in 2020 during the annual conference chaired by the Minister Delegate to the Minister of Finance, Yaoba Abdullahi. Emphasis was on keeping the economy at the steady growth in spite of the internal shocks and world economic shutdown. Beatrice Gum reports. 
Cameroon's growth in 2019 was steady, 4.1% in an uncertain international context, officials of the Ministry of Finance say. Inflation was controlled, budgetary and external deficit contained, and national debt remained sustainable. But that was 2019. In 2020, the government's economic, financial, social and cultural program is putting the country's growth rate at 4%. And the Ministry of Finance must ensure this happens. At this annual conference, therefore, senior officials of the Ministry of Finance from internal and external services will exchange and make proposals that will help the state remain on the path of sustainable economic recovery. Although their global performance in 2019 was encouraging as judged by the minister delegate at the Ministry of Finance, Yaoba Abdullah, in 2020, their services have to be more modern and their focus should be on consolidating the budget and relaunching the economy in a context that seeks to accelerate the implementation of decentralization. In continuation of our series on fiscal innovations this year, we'll take a look at tax benefits put in place to encourage youth employment and job creation. The most important is that exempting employers of some charges on wages for three years when they recruit young graduates. Clarice Aretakan reports. Studies from the International Labour Organization estimate youth unemployment in Cameroon at 5.69% in 2019 encouraging more of the below 35 age group to get into the job market, prompted programs and projects targeting youths in rural and urban areas. Adding fiscal incentives to already implemented measures has been acclaimed by many. The 2016 fiscal regime offers tax benefits to enterprises willing to employ young degree holders for a period of three years from the date of recruitment. They will not be subject to employer costs deducted from wages. The dispensation was open till January 2020. However, Article 105 of the General Taxation Code has reinforced and extended the measure in order to promote youth employment, paving the way for more youths to have access to jobs. An estimated 17,000 youths have benefited from the scheme between 2017 and 2018. The idea is equally to fight against underemployment by giving many the opportunity of acquiring work experience through their first jobs. The performance of SMEs is equally set to witness a positive leap by taking productivity and competitiveness a step further. With enterprise creation procedures considerably eased, the challenge businesses complained was to uphold fiscal obligations while getting the necessary labor to carry out activities. The new fiscal benefits are therefore expected to give youths a chance to keep busy through stable employment. The government of Cameroon has started distributing campaign funds for political parties taking part in this year's joint elections. Already 1.7 billion CFA francs announced by the government looks colossal. Candidates say it is not enough for the campaign. Luma Slim Davis looks at what it takes in terms of cost to organize a political campaign rally. Political rallies during campaigns play a significant role in the outcome of elections. These rallies, depending on the political party, differ from one another in character, structure and costs. We are supposed to have something that should bring the people like gadgets. We have key holders, caps, umbrellas, t-shirts and so on that will put them together that in the course of the meeting we distribute to people. It goes to more than 3 million, 3.5 million because if you need to hire a stage, if you need to hire only the stage alone is going to about 2 million and not to talk about the other issues. Because of the managerial complexities, philosophical beliefs, as well as other considerations some political parties do without rallies, while others go for smaller dimensions. Depend on the size of the rally and the party. The amount of money is much it is at the regional level. It's less at the lower level. The amount can be 500,000 francs or more it can also be less. It can even run up to two million of francs. In any case, no matter the coloration attributed, political rallies are important. We need to have money. We need to have car to move, other things. In terms of money, if you want to, to organize a meeting where 500 persons have to attend, you have to have in our pocket about two million francs. 
With its popularity, the social media complements political rallies and campaigns. A special prayer for peace in Cameroon has been said by some Christian faithful of President Church Azuri Bamenda. The prayer session was led by Reverend Festus Tanye during a midweek service, which saw the participation of Cameroon Women's Peace Movement. Mercy Kusi reports from Bamenda. A midweek service like no other at the Presbyterian Church as a rebamender, the congregants are joined by members of the Cameroon Women's Peace Movement to pray for peace and God's intervention in the ongoing conflicts in the northwest and southwest regions. They all light a candle in memory of the lives that have been lost as a result of the conflict and promise to take the light back to their neighborhoods for the message of peace to reach each and every one. The Cameroon Women's Movement for Peace is a group of female-led civil society organizations with a zeal to see peace reign in the country and have been carrying out similar exercises in other regions. A rundown of recent cases of malpractice in Cameroon indicates that journalism is at the crossroads. The abuse of the first power can be seen through slander, falsehood, defamation, setting of settling of scores, and many other unethical practices. To conclude our series, Beatrice Losamba, in the following commentary, says journalism must report facts after judging the veracity as spelled out in the Code of Ethics. Welcome to the universe of next generation journalism when microphone pilots ought to arm doubly to avoid journalism mouth practices. When under pressure or in search of fame, sometimes to merit some pittance, journalists have been known to fabricate facts, make up entire stories, spreading falsehood and peddling special interests. They have been found guilty of manipulating or selectively editing a statement and hiding facts, or better still, going on with flimsy information that has not been properly checked. Factual inaccuracies are common, and fact-free journalism has become norm, blurring the line between what is ethical and unethical. But these are not the worst journalism malfeasance in our society today, where local radio stations are born every day. It has become common to settle scores on air. People are defamed, unrest and wars are ignited by yellow journalism. Recent cases of reckless journalism can be cited for having stirred hate speech and division. When objectivity is replaced with malpractice, the media loses credibility and becomes vulnerable, obliging the law to step in. Criminals are no longer given ethical training. They are policed for not doing some self-policing. Scoops and deadlines may be missed, but defamation and lying are firing offenses. Journalists will have to avoid lawsuits the same way as other professionals, like doctors and teachers, by being careful, meticulous, and conscientious. Modern journalism must live up to its constitutional promise by measuring arguments against evidence and judging the veracities of the stories they tell. The Central Regional Motorized Platoon of the National Gendarmerie has seized 12 tons of fake medication estimated at close to 700 million seven francs. The dealers in the fake pharmaceutical products were intercepted during a routine control on the Yaoundé Bafia Bafosam Road recently. Kilian Dandy from reports. Gendarmerie sources say these 366 cartons of fake pharmaceutical products seized at Molnateli along the Yaoundé Bafosam Road came from Nigeria through Bamenda. What was visible as luggage in the Mercedes vehicle carrying these illicit medications were trace of eggs. In our normal control, we uncovered 12 tons of pharmaceutical products worth about 670 million francs CFA. Four suspects are under custody. Health officials have declared that the medication is a public health danger. The most dangerous product is the antibiotic because they are causing many resistance in our body. The revolutionized traffic flow control of the National Gendarmerie has facilitated this. The seizure of this stock 
of fake and contraband medications is the result of the flow control which enables the National Gendarmerie to fight against contraband exports, circulation of arms, ammunitions, and other illicit products. Perpetrators of criminal activities have been warned. Not only to stop their activities, but also to engage themselves to the social and the economic development of our country. The traffic road squad is under the direct command of the first gendarmerie region. 24 Cameroonian youths from the 10 regions of the country will, as from February 8, begin a training on filmmaking, writing for a documentary, among others. This is thanks to the Mwinda project initiated by Cameroonian born Oswald Lewat to promote cinema. This afternoon, the Minister of Arts and Culture received Mindwa promoters and applauded the initiative, which is in the second edition. Bedunquat promised government assistance and the best six films at the tail of the event will be awarded prizes on April 11 at the Canal Olympia in the nation's capital. MTN Cameroon has been awarded the best voice and data quality network in the country for the year 2019. The certificate was handed to the management of the mobile operator by the international organization known as Rotid and Schwags. Madon Kwele reports from Douala. MTN Cameroon has once more proven its worth as the best in providing its customers with an experience of exceptional quality for their communication and connectivity needs. This follows an analysis carried out by an international organization, Rod and Schwartz, that specializes in the auditing of the performance of 2G to 5G mobile networks worldwide using specific standards. We base it on the European ETC 103.559 standard. We've also used other standards like the ITU standards like the J343 standard for video testing and also the Polka standard for audio quality testing as well. So all the standards that we use were not proprietary. They are not hidden. They are all open and very transparent and so the results are very easy to review and verify. After benchmarking across towns with a total of 20,000 calls made and internet speed evaluations over 9,000 kilometers across the country, MTN Cameroon outsmarts all other operators with a total of 562 points out of a thousand. From the test that we did, we found that MTN indeed current has the best network in terms of voice, in terms of data, and in terms of video. MTN has provided the quality of service and the quality of experience that is in line with its vision of providing a brighter um, um, customer experience for its, for its subscribers. According to the top management of MTN Cameroon, the secret behind this highest network performance score award is teamwork and hard work. It's a true testament and a justification of the efforts and our commitment. The team that you, you've seen here um, is a very resilient um, team. It's the commitment that we have to ensure that we provide a good quality and reliable service uh, here, here in Cameroon. MTN Cameroon intends to continue topping the list by fully responding to the needs of its customers round the clock in this new digital world, believing everyone deserves the benefit of a modern connected life. Physical Education Minister Professor Nassis Molekombe has called on heads of the different organizing committees for the 2020 African Nations Championship to work in synergy and to make the event a success. He was speaking today during a preparatory meeting ahead of the draw of the competition. The draw will be in Yaoundé on February 17. Baldwin Sama was there. This considered one of the great moments leading to every great football competition, the draw ceremony of the 2020 African Nations Championship. Members of the local organizing committee know it should be successful and preparations must intensify. Presiding over a preparatory meeting prior to the draw to take place on February 17 and the imminent calf inspection visits to Cameroon, Sports and Physical Education Minister Professor Narcisse Mwede Kombi called on the different stakeholders involved to work closely and offer Cameroon one of the best competitions beginning with the draw ceremony. He urged the tournament's director and FICA foot officials to ensure that the different committees respect CAF's recommendations. Exigencies from CAF are precise in terms of quality internet services during that ceremony. 
CAF is expecting that there should be quality internet services that will permit different media organs to broadcast live the events, and we have taken measures for that. The different commission heads presented what has been done so far with proposals made that will go a long way to help the local organizing committee organize one of the best football competitions on the African continent. We come back to our main story of the day. A Bolova, chief town of the south region, has joined the rank of regional capitals with a state-owned hotel. The Bengo International Hotel was inaugurated in the town today by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, representing the head of state, the ceremony brought together a host of government ministers, administrative and civil society personalities, and a cross-section of the population. Christian Chiatam reports from Ebolova. The Bengo International Hotel is a three-star hotel with 94 rooms, two presidential suites, five junior suites, two meeting halls, two restaurants, and a host of modern facilities and installations. The structure, which has cost the state roughly 15 billion francs, is the fulfillment of a promise made by the head of state to the population of Ebolova during the agro-pastoral show in 2011. While inaugurating the structure today, Prime Minister Joseph John Guti, personal representative of the head of state, said it will boost the tourist potential of the South region, which shares boundaries with three countries of the Central African sub-region. Bengo Hotel. Bengo Hotel can create 100 direct jobs and 300 indirect jobs and equally generate revenue for the state as well as for the council. It will also generate revenue for the countless families in the south region which rely on livestock breeding and agriculture. Joseph John Gute equally noted that as Cameroon prepares to host the African Football Championship this year and the African Nations Cup in 2021, the hotel will improve the country's offer in terms of lodging. The Prime Minister has saluted the Chinese company which successfully constructed the hotel. He says the structure has reinforced the already strong cooperation ties which exist between Cameroon and China. The Bengo International Hotel, named after a river which flows near the structure, has been greeted by the population of the South region with much enthusiasm. A host of members of government, traditional authorities and administrative authorities joined the population at the inauguration ceremony. That ends the 7.30 news on CRTV. But before we leave you, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute has inaugurated Bengo International Hotel in the South region, the first ever state-owned modern lodging and tourism facility constructed in Ebolova. A host of government ministers were there to assist in the event. Public Works Minister Emmanuel Gandun Jumisi has described as satisfactory the pace of construction works on the Yaoundé Dwala motorway and has asked engineers constructing that route to keep the speed and make sure deadlines are respected. And the government has begun distributing over 1.7 billion civil francs as elections campaign money, but candidates say the funds are insufficient. In this news, we found out.